Uh, good morning, evening, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. And a special thanks to uh, Dan and Paris for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm more than happy to be among you and talking with you about data visualization. Uh, so a little bit of uh, background of myself. Uh, I'm Resorad, uh, Data Warehouse BI consultant, trainer, speaker, uh, Microsoft MVP, and author of some SQL Server BI books, and also Power BI online book. Uh, everything that I talk with you, uh, I talk about today is uh, mentioned in my uh, online, uh, in my blog, online book. Uh, all the whole example from beginning to end with the demo file, so you can download them all there. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can get back to me. These are my contact information. Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, agenda uh, visualization is quite a big topic by itself. We couldn't have uh, the whole uh, topic covered as a um, best practices in one hour. So I, I'm just focusing on a specific area of that. So I'll start with uh, a very quick introduction of why we do visualization, why it is important. Then I'll go into the topic of uh, what would be a uh, best chart to use in a specific time? For example, what is the benefit of using line chart, bar chart or column chart, scatter chart, uh, tables or metrics, combo charts, things like that. And then I'll jump into interactivity, which is a main important of visualization with Power BI. Uh, all, the, all examples of today will be uh, through Power BI, but the concept will uh, apply on any other technologies as well. I'll talk about interactivity of visuals and I'll talk about how grouping and binning works, which is a new feature in Power BI, which is really helpful in visualization. I'll talk about colors and importance of using colors, combination of colors, which is a really interesting topic. I'm sure you will enjoy that. And then it um, depends on how much time left, we will go through uh, a few custom visuals and you can see how custom visuals can be used uh, as a visualization tool. If you have any questions, just put your questions in question box, uh, uh, question pane, and uh, we will go through that as a Q&A at the end of the session. Or even if I don't have time to go through that, I will definitely respond them all in my blog as a separate post uh, today after this session. Okay. Uh, start. Importance of visualization. Visualization is uh, something that you deal with all the time. It's not something that you uh, work specifically for a BI solution. You work with numbers, reports, with, uh, with all of uh, 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 visualization elements every day. And, and uh, it is important to consider how to visualize that in the best way. Uh, a very classic example of that is a table of numbers. If I show you a table of numbers like this, and I ask you, okay, what are my big numbers? What are my biggest numbers? It's quite hard to understand what are these numbers. These are all numbers, and it's uh, for us, for all of data professionals or people who work with data, business analysts, uh, who work with data, this is not scary, but this is not easy to understand what is the biggest number. Uh, we can change visualizations easily. We can, for example, put some colors in it. If we put some colors and use some color codes, it's now much easier to figure out what are my biggest numbers because I have color coding. I could even change some sizes instead of colors, and that gives me more understanding of what would be bigger numbers. So changing uh, colors, sizes would be good. Sometimes you could even use another visual, like a chart, to show that much better. So this chart is showing the same visual, but much better because right now I can understand which one is the biggest, and then the order to the and down to the bottom because it is sorted. So much better in terms of visual. You can think about different ways that your visual can tell stories. This visual right now can only tell the story of a bunch of numbers ordered from biggest to lowest. But if I just make a very small change and uh, change the color of one of these, then I can tell a different story. I can say, for example, this is what our company is working on, and this is all, all, all other companies are working on. So, so I can actually, with changing a color, with changing a width of something, with changing the size of something, I can change the whole story that I'm 
uh, telling through my visualization. So it's really important to take the visualization right, and uh, and that's not a hard job. It's just a matter of thinking about how you want to do that. Uh, visualizations is uh, really important. If you get your visualization bad, you will get no insight. I've seen lots of pie charts, ton of charts, even column charts or bar charts sometimes can be uh, bad visualized. This is an example of that. And this is not just about pie chart that caused this problem, because you can use pie chart in this way, and you can see that the pie chart on the left hand side is pretty useful. You can understand that really, and it's really useful. The pie chart in the right hand uh, uh, sorry, I'm saying pie chart. These are donut chart, but similar to pie chart. The donut chart on the right hand side is doing the same thing. Uh, I mean, the, the both are donut chart, but the right hand side doesn't give me anything. I cannot understand which one is bigger, which one is smaller. The one in the left hand side is doing that. So charts are not the problem. It's the way that you use them is uh, is the main source of problem or uh, best insight you can get. Okay, so let's talk about uh, choosing uh, the right chart. Uh, so I'll start with line chart. Line chart normally is best for trend analysis. For example, if you want to visualize something over time, uh, not categorical information, something that you would uh, consider over time. And with the line chart, you can have, uh, uh, like, for example, a sales amount over a period of many years to see is it going upwards, downwards. You can have some extra information on that. You can, for example, have multiple measures, uh, one showing each category and uh, or one showing uh, different measures. And you can visualize them with different colors. Uh, and there are some other uh, reference lines yet that you can use. For example, you can bring minimum, maximum reference lines. You can add a trend line for these. And these are insights that you can get from a line chart. So let's start with, with a very quick uh, demo of the line chart. I'll uh, open my Power BI solution, and I'll just show you what the model of my demo is. Uh, this uh, demo is a Power BI. Uh, model on top of AdventureWorks uh, SQL Server database. It's a bunch of tables um, like dim product, dim customer, dim date, and a couple of fact uh, tables, which is fact internet sales and reseller sales. This is the database of sales information of bikes and bikes accessories, right? Uh, if I want to visualize something on this uh, uh, on this model, and let's say I want to visualize the revenue based on uh, whatever I have through the years. So I can build, uh, I can create a uh, line chart. In my line chart, I can bring from fact internet sales, sales amount as the value that I'm showing. And from date dimension, I can bring full date alternate key, right? I can bring full date alternate key as a whole uh, date, and you can see how uh, uh, how these values are going up and down from July 2005 to uh, to July 2008. The whole database that I have is in that scale. Uh, so that's one line and showing one measure over the time. If I want to change that, let me also change this to be date hierarchy and uh, go one level down to have years and months. So here I have years and months together. And I also bring uh, from product category, I'll bring product category as a filter and I'll only focus on bikes to see how bikes are selling. And I'll bring product subcategory as a legend, just to see what are different uh, product categories are working uh, against each other. So in this visual, I can see that I have sales or revenue for each product category. Uh, these are product subcategories, mountain bikes, road bikes, and touring bikes. Uh, so this is sales for each of these through the time. And you can see I can. Uh, very easily compare these with each other to see how these are working. For example, mountain bikes uh, didn't have that much sales at the beginning, but the sales at the end is more than sales of the other two. 
Uh, this is just the chart by itself, the line chart by itself. You, can, you should always keep uh, more information in your visual uh, to get more insight into that. If you go to the analytics part of the line chart, you can add a trend line to it. So if I add a trend line to it, this is a trend line, but this is a, uh, I would say, uh, aggregated or combined trend line of the whole uh, uh, combine measure value together. If you want to have a separate trend line, uh, so this shows that uh, my sales in total is going up for bikes, which is good. If I change that, uh, if I turn combined off, now I can see that the sales for mountain bikes and touring bikes are going upwards the trend, but the trend for road bikes is going downwards. So this gives me much more information, which I couldn't uh, have with just the normal chart itself. The trend here is really helpful because I can now understand that I'm going downward, right? And and this uh, effectively bring me a decision point that I have to put, I don't know, more marketing on this road bikes or we have to uh, change a little bit of uh, product line or uh, investigate more on why we are uh, going downwards on this and help to promote that part of uh, business as well and get that going upwards as well. There are lots of uh, lines that you can use here. You can have a constant line, something that says everything uh, higher than one and a half million or everything lower than that. You can have minimum, maximum, average lines, lots of lines you can use here and these are really helpful. For example, I'll add an average line. You can see this is an average line. This is again combined average line and I can turn a data label on that on, which says the average is $1.01 .01 million. Uh, you can have lots of lines here and you can have DAX measures to show these uh, values as well, but one important thing is that you should not overuse uh, these reference lines because if you have many reference lines here, 10, 11, it's really hard to understand what you are doing in this visual. So always keep things simple, but in that simplicity, bring insight, so uh, bring something that can tell the story. Okay, that was about lunch. Uh, let's talk about um, the other chart, the type of chart, which is column or bar chart. These are normally great for visualizing um, categories, a measure on a bunch of categories. Uh, these categories might not be sequentially in order because if these are sequentially in order, line chart might be better for visualizing that. Line chart or area chart, these are the same. Um, but for uh, categories, normally column chart and bar chart are better. And there are uh, different types of uh, column chart or bar chart. You can have clustered, stacked, or cluster stacked. Cluster stacked is a specific uh, addition to the stack chart, which is not uh, available in Power BI at the moment, so we will not talk about that, but I will show you uh, what are differences between clustered and stacked. Uh, so if you want, for example, to visualize something, uh, let's say back into this, uh, into this slide, uh, I have education and I have the sales amount by each uh, education category. So you can simply understand that but uh, education category has the best uh, revenue in my database, which is bachelor. But sometimes you might want to work with that through another uh, dimension as well. If I bring gender to understand what is the gender by education diversity for the revenue. There are two ways of doing that. One is doing through stack chart. The other one is doing that through cluster chart. So let me show you how difference of these two is. Uh, so I'll start, uh, I'll, I'll go to the demo that I had, I'll create another page here with one column chart and in this column chart I'll bring from them customer English education as the axis and from fact internet sales I'll bring sales amount, right? So you can see that I have um, a very simple column chart here uh, and if I hover on a, uh, any of these, I'll see that what is the value for each category. Uh, 
very good in terms of understanding. Now, if I want to bring gender into that as well, I want to see how is uh, how is different genders through this chart. So if I'll bring that gender from the customer as a legend into this chart, because this is a stack chart, I can uh, simply see that, uh, for example, similar to half, half percentage in each uh, category, I have gender females and males. Uh, which is good, but uh, one thing that this chart doesn't give me uh, good insight out of it is that I cannot understand is this male portion greater than female or uh, or reverse. Uh, I could, if I hover by my mouse, I can see that which number is greater, which in this case is female area, but it's much more convenient if I change this chart to a uh, clustered column chart. In clustered column chart, I can easily tell that, okay, this part in partial college, I have more females than males, but almost in, uh, uh, not, not in every other, but, but for example, in higher school, I have less female uh, generating revenue in my database, right? Uh, it's much easier to understand, uh, understand each portion of uh, the uh, category here and how it is working. But let me ask another question now. If I want to understand in total which category producing more revenue, considering having this gender as well, it's really easy to say bachelor at this stage because bachelor has both female and male greater than everything else in this uh, chart. But if I want to compare graduate degree and higher school, it might be a little bit harder. Still, graduate looks more, so easily you can say more, but if the values be closer to each other, it's really hard to understand is the total of graduate degree greater than the total of higher school or, or reverse. In those cases that you want to compare the whole part of each category, then stack chart would act better because in a stack chart, you can simply understand that graduate degree is more than high school, right? So a stack chart is great to understand the whole uh, category by itself. Clustered is great to understand each specific part of the, each specific uh, subcategory and compare this with each other. And one thing that you have to remember all the time is that you, uh, uh, is that using sorting and using data labels always helps, uh, no matter what type of chart you are using. If I go to formattings here and I'll turn on my data labels, uh, doesn't matter which type of chart I'm using, always these data labels are helpful. So consider using that and consider sorting the chart as well. Sorting will be also helpful on that as well. But th that, that's the main difference between uh, these two charts. So it depends on how you want to tell um, your story, you have to choose uh, one of these charts, but there is no, um, there is no uh, I would say, uh, this chart between these two. This all depends on what you want to explain and what you want to visualize uh, to choose the right chart between these two. Okay, that was about uh, column chart and bar chart. Another chart which is really helpful and it is really special in Power BI is a scatter chart. A scatter chart is a chart that is perfect for visualizing three different measures uh, together in one chart, and you can also have a trend of that as well. You can see that how these are trending over time, different years, different months, are these going uh, uh, upwards, uh, downwards, and how these are comparing with each other. Uh, I'll show you that as another example. So I'll create a scatter chart here. The normal scatter chart is just uh, three dimensions. You have x-axis, y-axis, and the size of bubbles. This is the normal scatter chart that you can find in almost all visualization tools, but the scatter chart in Power BI has a specific axis called play axis, which I will talk about that as well, which is really powerful in terms of uh, analyzing something over time. Okay, for this visual, what I want to uh, C is all bring from fact internet sales, sales amount, 
as the, let's say, x-axis. And I'll bring from fact reseller sales, sales amount as y-axis. Uh, one one really important uh, uh, really important uh, topic here is that visualization is great component of a BI solution, but modeling is also another main component of that as well. You can see that I have two tables here, two different tables, both have the same column name, sales amount. In my visualization, I can see only sales amount, right? Sales amount here, sales amount there. There is no uh, way to understand that which which sales amount is this. I can put some uh, uh, x-axis title or uh, y-axis title for that, but it's always best to consider these things in modeling. If you have such situation, consider best namings in your modeling, and uh, that's where all uh, uh, insight starts to begin with. So you have to build a best model to build uh, the best visualization on top of that. Uh, we are not talking about modeling, so I'll leave it uh, for now here. We will keep these sales amount as it is for now and uh, uh, we will probably talk about modeling later on, another session, if there is any time. Okay, so I'll bring uh, another um, measure here as well. Right now we have two measures. The other measure I'll just bring from one of these, total product cost as a size of the bubble. So you can see I have the size of the bubble, x-axis, y-axis. Now I want to visualize the details of that. So for visualizing the details of that, uh, let me just f filter the data set before. I'll bring in product category name as a filter, and I'll just focus on bikes again. And I'll bring product subcategories as legion. So now what you can see is uh, similar to the line chart we had, but this time we have scatter chart that shows two different, three different measures actually. In line chart we had only fact internet sales, sales amount, which was, or internet sales. Now we have internet sales, reseller sales, internet sales actually in uh, this axis, reseller sales in this axis, or maybe the other side, and uh, and the size of bubble also talks about uh, total product cost, right? So we have all of these information. Uh, and you can easily, in this view, uh, understand that road bikes in total is far better than um, those two, both in reseller sales and internet sales. If I go back to the line chart I've created before, you can see that road bikes right now is going downwards. But in this chart, it's telling me that road bikes in total is still acting better, right? So that's a product that I should still working on it because that's produced the most revenue in the business so far in these categories, right? So uh, this chart by itself can tell me what is the uh, total is in this filtered view. But if I want to show that how it is in total, I mean how it is uh, acting over time, I can add another axis, which is play axis. If I expand them date and bring um, calendar year into play axis, now uh, the chart changes and shows me only one years of information with a play axis down at the below. So I can see this is 2008 data. In 2008 data, road bikes is not the best. In 2008 data, I have uh, mountain bikes, which is having the best internet sales, and uh, uh, touring bikes, which has the best reseller sales, and uh, road bikes, something in between, right? But this is just 2008. I can play this chart to see how it was through the years. So it was pretty fast, I'll go through that one step at a time. At 2005, I had only two types of these bikes, mountain bikes and road bikes. There were no touring bikes at that time. And uh, mountain bikes was better in terms of reseller sales, sales bikes was better in terms of internet sales. In 2006, they both jumped up. Uh, road bikes had the best uh, sales uh, of 
uh, both resellers and internet sales. Then in 2007, uh, the internet sales of mountain bikes took uh, the front and took the lead. Uh, steel road bikes has the reseller sales, and now we can see the category of touring bikes appears, which is pretty small at this stage. And if I go to 2008, now I can see that road bikes is going downwards heavily at this stage, while the touring bikes is coming up. So it's really uh, insightful. You can tell lots of a story with this. This is a great storytelling chart, especially when you have different measures. And I haven't talked about the size of bubble at all. So size of bubble is something else that you can uh, focus on that as well. And with this uh, chart, you can also highlight some, uh, one of these uh, we, uh, one of these bubbles and see how that particular category worked through the time. So you can see this category, uh, we had that growing at 2006, which was the best year we've had, then in 2007 and 2008, it's going, uh, it going downwards. I can compare that with something else as well. So I can compare these together with just control click, and this shows me how these acted together. So they are both going downwards. And there should be something to do with their marketing, definitely, but still um, mountain bikes is acting better than road bikes because mountain bikes still has better internet sales. Uh, and in total, uh, mountain uh, mount, uh, touring bikes is growing up as well. Best uh, for telling this kind of stories and uh, you can uh, publish this and have this visualization in website and also in your Power BI app, mobile app as well. Okay, that was about scatter chart. I'll go through two other visualization very quickly. Uh, table and matrix. Uh, table and matrix are uh, uh, visualizations that I've seen heavily used in reports. Uh, in Power BI, you can conditional format your table. It's really easy to conditional format, but you can't believe how many tables I've seen without conditional formatting. Uh, tables without conditional formatting is fine, but uh, just think about that for a second, why you are putting numbers in the table. You want to analyze it somewhere. You want to find what is the best number, what is the lowest number, what numbers are greater than a specific value, what numbers are lower than a specific value, what numbers are closing, closer to each other. With just the single conditional formatting on the table, you can have all of these. So don't uh, leave tables as is. And creating conditional formatting is really easy. I'll do a very quick demo on that here as well. I'll create a table with full name of customer, and uh, yeah, I think that's enough, and, and sales amount. So just customer name and sales amount, and I'll make the font size of it just bigger to show you numbers better, right? Uh, a little bit smaller. Uh, this table is fine. I can go to the uh, formatting section of that. There are some tables of style. I can make this uh, looks a bit nicer, things like that, but it's always best to have conditional formatting. Conditional formatting helps a lot. For creating conditional formatting, just click on the field section of your table or matrix, select the field that you want to put conditional formatting, and click on conditional formatting. This is the most basic type of conditional formatting. From minimum to maximum, you will have a variety of colors. So if I click on that, now I can understand easily, very easily, I can understand that these numbers are more, 6,000, and these numbers are less, like 69, those kind of things. Uh, or there are different types of conditional formatting you can apply. For example, you can say that everything that is lower than 100 to be red, everything that is higher than under it to be green or something like that, right? So any types of conditional formatting is helpful. Don't leave your tables without conditional formatting because at the end of the day, you want to 
see the data or business analysts want to see the data and um, understand that. So you are helping them to understand easier rather than just looking at this for uh, two, three minutes to figure out what's happening. This is a very simple thing, but very useful. And combo chart. Uh, I, I talked about different, having different measures at the same chart. You can have that with uh, bar chart, column chart, scatter chart, with line chart, with all of these, you can have multiple measures at the same time. But uh, if your measures are at two different scales, uh, it's probably better to use a combo chart for that rather than having a line chart or column chart specifically. For example, if you want to show something as a percentage and another thing as a dollar amount or quantity, normally combo chart works best for that. Let me show you an example of that as well. I'll just create a normal uh, clustered column chart and in this clustered column chart I'll show sales amount from packed internet sales and sales amount from packed reseller sales. You can see these are quite different scales. It's still something understandable but different scale I would say and from dim date, if I'll bring calendar year as an axis, you can see how it is acting. This is still fine, but if we had very big value for one of these, then the other uh, measure's value will be so small, uh, which you couldn't see. In these cases, I would normally suggest changing that to a combo chart, which is a line chart and column chart together, and put one of these as a line chart, you can still see that uh, these are pretty different scales, not that much good for visualizing, but now you can change one of these to be different. For example, I can change this to be a percentage through quick calc. And now I have both at the same scale. I, uh, I have uh, my axis down below, which is year, my axis in the right hand side, which is percentage, and that percentage is for the line chart. And the left hand side, I have dollar values, which is for column chart. So really easily, this gives you very useful information. For example, you can understand that in 2007 and 2008, we had almost same, uh, I believe this is internet sales, yeah, same internet sales almost, but the amount of reseller sales heavily went down in 2008 which is 90% here and 40% of the grand reseller sales in 2007. So this type of chart gives you information when you have two different measures not at the same scale. Uh, and there are other types of charts. You can use um, um, waterfall chart. Waterfall chart is normally best when you have uh, sequential going up and down values like cash flow. I, uh, I would see if we have time at the end of presentation, I will show you also an example of waterfall chart as well. Uh, but for now, we will just uh, go on. Uh, also consider enhancing your visualization. Also, always consider filtering uh, your charts, doing some sortings, adding some data labels. You have seen data labels. Sorting is really easy. In all charts, you have to just change the way that you sort values. <coughs> Uh, with clicking on three dots on the top right hand side of each chart and filtering as well. So if you have only uh, these few numbers of categories, that's fine. But if you have a visual with lots of values like this, then it's probably better to do a filtering. And filtering does, are really easy to in Power BI. You can simply click on the full name filtering. You can apply basic filtering, select a few of them advanced filtering, put some conditional, or even top end filtering which added recently. For example, if you are interested only in top 10 customers, you can put top 10 and bring sales amount here to get the top 10 customers who have the best sales amount. Obviously the conditional formatting for this is not working because the conditional formatting here should change because we don't have values less than 100 or more than that. So in this case, I'll make it lowest value and highest value out of this 
and you can see that the highest value out of all of these are Jordan Turner and these are your top 10 best customers. So always consider filtering, applying sorting, labels, uh, data labels, all of these are helpful in your visualization. Uh, the next topic uh, for uh, today's discussion is controlling interaction of visual. Visuals are uh, uh, visuals are interactive with each other in Power BI. You can have a filter, a slicer, a chart. When you click on that chart, that highlights other charts or change the highlight of something else. You can control this, and it is really important because with controlling these, you are telling the stories of your visualizations. Uh, if I go to my Power BI demo again and create another page and in this page I'll just create a very quick uh, chart here as well. I'll create a column chart with education and sales amount. So that's one chart. I'll also create a bar chart of the product color and sales amount again. And I'll make this sorted as well. And I put a, a slicer here. I put a slicer here for, let's say, from them customer occupation and one total value which is the total sales amount, right? So far that's uh, I think whatever I want to visualize uh, and I can make one of these as a stack chart as well. I'll just bring gender into this as a legend, right? Okay, uh, if you select something in a slicer, it will change uh, those charts because it's interactive. If you select uh, one chart, this will change highlight of other charts. And you can see what is the portion of per partial college total sales is $7 million, and what is the uh, portion of partial college in different product uh, colors. You can see that simply, but uh, still not the best. For example, if you click on partial college, this gives you some information, but it's really again hard to realize what is uh, uh, what is the best value here, what is the worst value here. Worst value is easy, best value is easy, but those values that that are close to each other is not easy to realize. It's always best to control the interaction between visuals. Uh, on the other hand side, you might want to have another uh, column here, another visual here that shows you the total sales amount regardless of selection of one of these uh, one of these filters. I'll click on one of these uh, and copy that here. Uh, you can control this interaction easily. For controlling an interaction, you just select a chart, filter, whatever you want, and you can go to the formatting, edit interaction. Uh, once you've clicked on that, you will see a number of icons on top of each chart, which at this stage shows that this slicer affects on everything. You can see that um, this is uh, showing the filter icon for everything. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see the filter icon is highlighted. That means uh, everything that uh, you do on this slicer will filter that chart. If I don't want this filter to happen, I can click on that none, right? So that means with selecting something in this, only this one that is filtering will be changed, not the other one. The other one always show me the actual value. It doesn't matter what I select in this filter. But this is only for this filter. If I select something else, this will affect them both, right? So you have to control that uh, for every single, uh, every uh, two different combination of charts and control that for that. For example, instead of selecting here and seeing the highlight result there, I can click on this, edit interaction. You can see this time I have three buttons, 
filter, not filter, or highlight. At the moment, highlight is selected. That's why when I click something here, it will highlight this. But if I don't want to highlight, if I want to filter, I can select filter, and now with every selection here, I can see the filtered area for that particular selection. So this is only partial college product color diversity or graduate degree product color diversity. And it's much more easier to understand rather than having that to be highlighted. So always consider controlling this interaction. This is really important feature and you shouldn't just leave it as it is because you can tell different stories with controlling this interaction. Uh, grouping, I'll go to grouping very quickly and then we'll go to uh, colors, uh, which is uh, the last interesting uh, bits of work. Uh, grouping and binning. In Power BI, you can simply create uh, groups on the fly. So sometimes you have groups, categories in your data set, which is fine. But sometimes you don't have those groups and as a business analyst or someone who works with the data, you know that these categories can work with each other, right? Uh, I'll just copy this chart, paste it here because we don't have so much time, so I'll just copy that here. So that's English education and sales amounts, uh, the internet revenue out of these educations. You can see I have a partial high school and high school here. These are similar to each other, I would say. In my uh, uh, understanding, these might be a group together. So I'll click one of these, hold the control key, click the other one, and right click group. This will create a group of these two and everything other. You can see that in the legend that says one group is high school and partial high school. The other one is the other, which is every, everything else which is really helpful. Uh, and this feature is added, I think, late October, the Power BI desktop October version. If you have your Power BI, if you haven't updated your Power BI desktop, I strongly recommend uh, to do that. When you create that group, there is a DAX operation behind the scene working. And that DAX operation creates a new field, a new measure or calculated column, whatever it is, and when you click on edit groups, you can edit this group. You can see that this is a group that we just created, which is high school, partial high school, and everything other. You can bring more groups here as well. For example, you can say bachelor and graduate degree. These two are also another group. And partial college might be a group by itself. In that case, you probably don't need another other group. You can also change the name of it if you want. When you press OK, now you will see three different groups. And groups are colored in the same colors. And the beauty of this now is that these groups now can be used as the main visualization axis rather than just the legend. At the moment, English education groups field is legion. English education is the axis. If I remove the English education and bring this new category. Now I can see the category. Here is my total partial college, uh, which is only one item. Here is high school and partial high school together, bachelors and graduate degree together. And now I can bring the actual English education as a legion, and that shows me how I have, uh, I'm working through each category. In bachelor and graduate degree, I have more bachelors. And the total is more than everything else. Partial college is greater than the total of high school and partial high school. But in this category, high school is acting much better than partial high school. So I have created some insight with just adding some groups that made sense for, from my point of view as a business analyst. This grouping can also be done at any other levels. You can create this grouping for a number of dates uh, uh, aging brand or something like that. For example, if I create a bar chart here, and in this bar chart I want to show sales amount over the time, but the time that I want to show here is uh, buckets of six months, not everything, right? 
in my dim date, I don't have buckets of six months, but what I can do is the full date alternate key, which is a date field, I can click on that, create a new group of that, and I can bin that. Bin is similar to the group that we created. It's just named binning when we are talking about numbers or dates. And I can choose my bin type to be months, and I can say, okay, create bins of six months. Similar to the other method, this will create a group or bin for me, which I can bring that in Axis now. And now you can see I have uh, groups of six months, from July 2008 to January 2008. Oh, sorry, from, this <laughs> from July 2005 to January 2006, again to July 2006, this is beginning of each six month. And you can have bins and groups for every scale. You can do that for month, year, day, hour, minute, seconds. If, for example, you want to do for a week, that would be seven days. So it's really easy to apply. Okay, that was about grouping and binning uh, visualizations, and you can see that I have used that in this uh, view. You can see that I have used that for a yearly income as well. So I created a yearly income bin, those that are uh, in the category of 30K, those that are in the category of 30 to 60K, 60 to 80K, uh, you should have equal sizes at the moment with this binning and grouping. It's not possible to change the size of buckets, but uh, you just select the size and it will apply on all categories. If you want to change the size and to different size for each bucket, then you have to write tax or change it to in the data source level or do some power query things on top of that. That was grouping and binning very really quickly. <laughs> and I'll go to colors. Probably we will not have time to go through custom visuals this time. We will keep that probably for another session if you have time. Colors. Colors is one of the most important things you can do in your uh, uh, visualizations stories, and uh, it's really important. For example, uh, lots of people know that uh, red and green are good match colors, but how many of you know that uh, orange and blue is good color range as well? You might be that smart to know, but I normally is not. I'm normally not that smart. There is a good way to understand that. There is a concept uh, or there is something called color wheel. Color wheel is uh, not invented, but first, uh, I would say, found by Isaac Newton at uh, 1666. And that talks about uh, 12 different colors in a circle. Uh, you can see a variety of colors from red uh, to yellow, green, violet. And the way that these colors work are really important. Uh, so uh, thinking about colors, the first thing that we have is primary colors. Primary colors that we have are yellow, uh, uh, red, and blue. With combination of these colors, for example, combination of uh, uh, two primary colors, like uh, yellow and red, you will get orange. With uh, yellow and blue, you will get green. With blue and red, you will get violet. So these are called secondary colors. With combination of a secondary color and a primary color, you will get tertiary colors. So these are 12 colors created here. I put the reference of where I put these pictures from. So what is the importance of knowing these colors? With these colors, you can tell your story differently so people can realize that differently. There are two types of colors as well in total. One uh, set are warm colors, the other set is cool colors. Warm colors are uh, uh, the range of red to a yellow, uh, like uh, light green, and this is normally uh, based for happiness, showing happiness, passion, energy. The cool colors normally is best for showing something, a uh, sense of calm, professionalism really useful. It's really important to know that I've seen lots of visualizations without thinking about what the colors are actually doing. And the other important thing is that colors have harmonies. You should always think about those harmonies when you use colors in your visualizations. Color palettes actually are using harmonies at the moment, but uh, in Power BI at the moment, at least, we don't have color palettes as a built-in feature. 
you can use these harmonies to create your own palette, your own uh, set of colors. Uh, uh, I'll show you six schemes or six color harmonies now, uh, which are the most famous uh, harmonies uh, of colors. The first one is complementary colors. Complementary colors are two colors right at the right at opposite side of each other in uh, color view. Red and green is great match. Orange and uh, orange and blue is great match. Yellow and violet is great match. These are great match. Uh, you can use these opposite colors uh, beside each other. One, for example, as a background. Another for uh, visualizing something. Analogous colors are colors beside each other that can be uh, like a harmony of colors. You can find that really uh, 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 too much in uh, in the nature. A shade of a green, a shade of uh, yellow colors. Triadic colors are colors that are um, at the same distance of each other, uh, creating a triangle. Uh, and these can be used as three different colors you want to visualize. Really used, uh, really uh, come on and used for creating color schemes. Uh, the split complementary is the complementary, but instead of using this color, it's using the tertiary colors uh, uh, or colors uh, beside that, which is really good. One of them can be background, the two others can be colors that you are using. And rectangular color is two complementary colors, for example, red and green here, yellow and violet. Altogether, these are creating a rectangular which is really good in visualizing different measures, different components. The square is the same thing as rectangular. The, um, the, just the, uh, they are evenly uh, around the color wheel, so you can use that. When you use these uh, two last, you should consider that uh, keeping the number of um, colors, warm colors and uh, cool colors and uh, even match type of thing, not using one of them quite a lot. Uh, and there are variations of colors as well. You can have the color itself, you can combine it with white to make it the tint of that color, combine it with gray to make it tone, combine it with black to make it uh, shade. So that's how you will have your different colors. If it is a still hard to find the match color, uh, there are uh, a web, uh, there are a number of websites like this one that has a number of a great number of color palettes. You can see what color palette you would be interested in more. I can tell the story best and use that. Uh, also, consider color blindness as well. I'll just uh, wrap it up very quickly. Color blindness. Uh, there are about four percent uh, in average color blind, and color blind won't see exactly what you see in the screen. So uh, consider visualizing with color blindness as well. Uh, I don't have talk, uh, time to talk about custom visuals, so I'll just pass it through. Reference to a study more. Uh, there's a Power BI online book. All demos and examples I've ex explained are there. There are two visualization sessions, very useful. Uh, from past summit, one of them, my favorite pie from a friend of mine, uh, Marcus. Summit 16 and a bigger vote from another friend of mine, Mark, in Summit 15. I highly recommend uh, reading these. You can download it from past website and read that. Stefan Few is uh, the father of uh, data visualization. There are lots of great workshops, books, articles on his website. And David Knight also had a lot of good blog series for custom visual, which I hadn't time to go through custom visuals in this example. Uh, so that's that thank you for your time if we have time we can go through questions then or if we don't i can just respond that in my blog post but really like. sure uh, i know we are at the three o'clock point here time but um we'll ask a few questions here um one of them was i know we didn't show it today but one of them was in regards to the map chart um yes. they were they were wondering is it possible to plot like two different sets of points. Like say an example would be I wanted to plot um, like all the gas stations and then at a separate set of points I wanted to map or plot the ATM locations. Is it possible to do that with different yeah. icon yeah. points? Uh, 
and uh, not not with the normal map. Map actually was the other part that I wanted to uh, visual, uh, I wanted to show today. If I hadn't time to bring that in, but uh, for map, I would uh, strongly recommend using ArcGIS Visual for that. ArcGIS Visual, you can have different uh, different. Uh, I would say uh, shapes, not all of them to be bubble. One of them can be bubble, another can be different shape. And you can also have different layers on the map. You can have one layer for, uh, let's say, heat map for something, another layer for showing bubbles or something. And ArcGIS itself has lots of maps by its own. Uh, for example, a map is for a uh, gas station in uh, states, or another map can be uh, school zones in New Zealand. But uh, lots of maps is in there which you can use as well. OK, so is that one of the custom visuals? That's not one of the built-in ones, correct? Uh, it, it is a built-in, built -in, but it is a steel preview. Uh, you should have the latest Power BI desktop, and you should go to uh, the Power BI, uh, um, Power BI uh, menu option, which is File, uh, Options and Settings, Options, and that's a preview feature. Turn that on. Oh, that's the shape map. So is that, that's the Esri one, correct? Uh, a shape map is uh, one of those maps. Uh, there is oh. one other <laughs> ArcGIS. Okay, yes. perfect. All right. Um, another one was: Is it is there any option to use a custom color palette, like to reference it instead of having to go in and change them all the time? Uh, unfortunately, not a built-in way of doing that. Uh, there are some workarounds. Uh, you will see them in. Uh, Power BI community websites, uh, some people suggested some uh, methods, but there is no built-in feature for that at the moment. Yeah, the best would be changing colors here and there, but I believe color palette is in the uh, product line somewhere. It will come out. I don't know when. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, we should wrap it up. Um, I can send you the other questions offline, and then you can put that in a post if you want to do a yeah, follow-up post. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks for your opportunity, and thanks, everyone, for attending. Fantastic. Yes, and thank you so much, Reza, to present. I appreciate you taking the time for this. I know you're over in uh, New Zealand, so it's already tomorrow. Um, so I hope <laughs> the weather is nice. <laughs> but. Uh, before we leave, do you have any uh, parting words or comments for the users, for all the attendees? Um, uh, uh, just, just the last comment. Uh, visualization is really important. Never uh, leave it uh, just uh, a few bunch of charts working there. Always uh, think about that very carefully. And uh, my contact information is always there. So feel free to contact me and ask questions as well. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. Um, next month, uh, we will have Layla present. Uh, she'll be doing it on uh, Cortana Intelligence Suite. So stay tuned for that update. And uh, thanks again for everyone attending. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.